Yo, what is up guys and welcome to another Wild Rift video and in today's video it's not actually me that's gonna be playing it's gonna be a player called Antisocial and this guy is just an absolute beast on Rakan. So this video we guys are gonna be watching one of the best Rakans Europe has to offer. So the socials are in the description, he streams on Twitch and a Discord server has been put in the description so if you want to skip to the gameplay immediately there's timestamps in the description. He sent me a gameplay that I haven't watched yet by the way because I love to make it you know authentic by watching for the first time and it's a 28 minute game or 28 minute recording so uh, yeah it, it it must be good so now let's talk about building Rakan um you know with Rakan when he actually came out it was always building stuff like you know Zeke's Convergence and then the Protector's Vow this is when Rakan came out right like this was the way to build him but then people started to figure out like hey wait a minute Rakan has some insane ability power ratios so now, the best way to build Rakan is Rod of Ages. Your first item is always going to be Rod of Ages. It skills incredibly hard into the late game. And yeah, it gives you a lot of max health as well. It's just really the perfect item to go for on Rakan. You can, however, there is another item that you can go for, which is the, Lu which is the Lunas Echo. Now, this item, I, I mean, you know what it is? It's just so high risk because this item instantly gives you 85 ability power. It gives you 20 ability haste, which is obviously great. And then, of course, it gives you that bonus damage at your next attack. Like, the thing is, this, this item deals much more damage than the Road of Ages, especially in the early game. But when you get to the late game, you're going to be insanely squishy. Like, sure, you're going to have more damage, but the squishiness is just, in my opinion, not worth it. So if you want to have a bit of a safer game, Road of Ages, if you want to really destroy the enemy, early game boom Luden's echo after that you get boots and it's situational you may think that ionian boots of lucidity is the way to go but the thing is like plated two cups is just generally better because like he takes a lot of attack damage with this build you're very squishy and to have the plated two cups you know to tank up that damage from the enemy adc for example you can actually still go in and be a little bit of a tank or what i mean is basically not get one shot because if you don't go for the plated steel cups and actually choose to go for st something like the Ionian Boots of Lucidity, sure you'll have your abilities on a long cooldown, but if you get Chain CC'd, you're just, you could, you're just dead. You're absolutely dead. You could get a Mercury Threat if they really have a lot of CC, especially up against something like a Twisted Fate or something. But as I said, really try to find an excuse to go for the plated steel cups because these boots are just amazing on Rakan. So for your enchantment, Protobelt is the way to go. Like if you're, if you're really good at Rakan, you go for Protobelt. You can, of course, still go for a Locket or a redemption i just don't recommend it because your third ability already gives a shield so you know and your first ability heals your team up as well so you know that's why protobelt just it allows you to do better engages especially with your ultimate like to be able to hit that first enemy with your ultimate protobelt allows you to do that without actually having to use your second ability because of course you can engage with your second ability and your ultimate but then protobelt allows you to actually engage without your ultimate uh, without your second ability. We'll, we'll see more of this in the gameplay. Now, second item is situational, but generally Ardent Sensor. So, Rabadon's Death Cap obviously deals more damage, but Ardent Sensor is more worth it. Because while you may think Rakan only has like one way to proc the Ardent Sensor, he doesn't. He actually has two. The first one is with his third ability. You know, you can dash to an ally, you can give Ardent Sensor to one ally and then to another as well. But the second way is his first ability. Your first ability can actually give the Ardent Sensor to multiple allies. Because, you know, you can shoot it if you hit an enemy and get to your team. You can heal as many people as you want if they're around you. And all of them are going to be getting the Ardent Sensor proc as well. So keep in mind, your third ability can generate this Ar the Ardent Sensor and then your first ability as well. And if you play it correctly, you can hit your first ability very easily on the enemy. Third item is going to be Rabadon's, Rabadon's Death Cap. At this point, you're just going to do insane damage. So you go for the Rabadon's Death Cap. And then here, it's like whatever. It's completely situational, right? Like you can even actually get a Zeke's Convergence, even though you're playing, you know, full AP Rakan. Zeke's Convergence is a vi viable item to go for as like your fourth item or even your third item if you want to. Frozen Heart is of course good. Uh, even Spirit Visage, if your team has some healing, you know Staff of Flowing Waters is amazing as well. You know, it, like whatever you need, whatever you need, you go for. Um, yeah, as I said, like whatever you need. Like the first, the first three items are generally going to be Rod of Ages, Ardent Sensor, and then the Rabadon's Death Cap. You really always want to be including these three items in your build, and then after that, completely, completely situational. So for your runes, you go for Electrocute. Again, in the beginning of playing Rakan, everyone would go for Aftershock. 
but electrocute now right like now it's now it's full ap rakan time electrocute skills with ap as well go for electrocute for your second rune you can go for two runes weakness if you want to be providing a little bit more damage for your team and then triumph if you want to deal more damage and if you want to have a bit more sustainability weakness is good because especially combined with your ultimate and your second ability you know you're going to be applying that weakness those weakness stacks on all of the enemies triumph on the other hand is going to give you more sustain like if you go in and get to a very low amount of hp and when your allies get some kills you're going to be healing up because of the triumph right so you have to decide weakness or triumph third one you have to decide as well hunter titan or conditioning like you don't really need a strong early game rune because you already have your passive which gives you the barrier so you don't need the likes of an adaptive carapace or a bone plating you know or even a second wind it's just much better to go for these late game runes like the hunter titan or the conditioning if you need the, if you need the tenacity you go for the hunter titan otherwise you go for the conditioning which is going to make you very tanky and now especially combined with the world of ages it gives you a lot of health this item and then the ardent sensor uh gives you health as well so you'll get a lot of health and if you combine that with the armor and magic says that conditioning provides to you it is a great rune to go for now for your fourth rune, there's a few that you can go for too hunter genius if you want the cooldown reduction pathfinder if you want to roam around and gank a lot and then you can also go for the pack hunter you know this one is really good to give bonus movement speed near your allies and then also the bonus gold of course it like it's really about these three runes pathfinder hunter genius or the pack hunter uh, for your spells, you go for Flash and Ignite. I don't recommend an Exhaust on Rakan because Ignite is just much, much better. It really contributes to your burst combo. You know, you have Electrocute, you have full AP, you have your Crazy Engage, and then to add an Ignite to that too, you will do insane damage. So now, enough about the build. Let's get into the gameplay. Oops, what did I just do? There we go. On to the gameplay. So this is not me playing. As I said, this is a player called Antisocial. I believe he's currently in Grandmaster rank. And this guy is just a beast on Rakan. Like, uh, I saw it and I was like, yeah, you know, if you want to, you can provide some gameplay to the channel. And as I said, he streams on Twitch too. And I put a Discord link in the description. I'm doing a skin giveaway too. All you have to do to enter is put a comment under the video. So let's watch it together, right? This is also my first time watching it. I've played a fair share of Rakan too, especially when he came out, but I'm like, I personally haven't fully experienced the full AP Rakan yet. What I mean with that, I haven't played Rakan with the full AP too much. I have played it, I know how it works, and I've seen it and I've asked about it, but me myself, I haven't played it a lot. But you guys know how it, what happens, right? Like when you're in the ranked match, you just get one shot by the enemy Rakan. It's just crazy. So let's see how he actually plays Rakan in the lane matchup, right? Like Rakan has that passive, like the Malphite passive, right? Like, you know, where, where you get the barrier. As we can see, he's utilizing the passive and he's going in, procking the electrocute procking the electrocute and because of his passive he's actually able to outtrade the enemy in the short term by the way i think if you didn't know about the passive if you attack the enemy or hit the enemy with abilities you're going to be reducing the cooldown of the passive by one second so in a team fight oh he's actually rotating this possibly looks like a kill on nunu uh, amumu flash go boom nice that was great. And then as you can see, after he goes in, he uses his first ability to heal up from the Diana, right? Like that is that is that is a way to basically hit your first ability for free. Instead of trying to hit it like like uh like Robin Hood, you can get close to the enemy and just smack it on their face very, very easily. You know what's funny, by the way? There is a secret thing in the passive of the first ability. Like, when you actually look at upgrading the first ability, it shows you that it deals more damage, etc., etc. But the one thing, which is probably the most important thing that it doesn't show you, is that the range also increases. Oh, here again, yet again. Clutch, saving the Jinx, and then getting a kill. But basically, when you upgrade your first ability, it increases the range. And as you can see, actually... It seems like he's prioritizing upgrading the first ability. Now, this is the first time for me seeing it. Because, you know, the normal way of playing Rakan is actually fully upgrading your second ability. But when you upgrade, when you upgrade your first ability, the healing is going to be insane. And the damage is going to be insane. Well, it's interesting. I'm... I'm, I'm I'm curious to see whether he actually fully upgrades the first ability or if he just puts a point in it and then fully upgrades the second ability. That's actually interesting. Wow. And um, 
you may have seen this in esports as well rakan is really good at ganking right like you saw it in this game already you don't want to be sticking near your lane all the time this is why i was also talking about the pathfinder rune because with pathfinder in situations like these you're going to be much faster you know you're going to be walking like nine percent faster to the lanes and can gank more efficiently you're not going to be wasting as much time you can just gank a bit more efficiently here we can see he's waiting fiora is probably going to be baiting the darius oh it's actually tatsu who is another streamer as well of wild rift and then if the fiora decides to fight with the darius unfortunately Unfortunately, right here, it's not the best situation to be baiting the Darius because, you know, the Darius is already playing passive because he cannot win a one versus one against the Fiora. Here we can see, oh, that one was good. Oh my god. Wow, without a flash even. That's the thing with Rakan, right? Like, he can just come out of nowhere with the third ability, dash to an ally, and then engage with his second ability. And then if you have to, you can even use your ultimate as well. So here, let's see. Yet again, we can see a clear pattern right here, right? We can see a very clear pattern. He he tries to be sneaky. Then he uses his third ability to get close to the enemy. Meanwhile, of course, the third ability shields an ally, which is very good. Then when he's close to the enemy, you know, he uses his second ability because then the travel time gets reduced. And then when the enemy is knocked up, he uses his first ability, which means that it's a free hit. Because, of course, if the enemy is knocked up, oh, it's a bit too much. It's a bit too much right there. That's a bit too much. The reason that it didn't work is because, first of all, it was kinda int. But secondly, and more importantly, like the thing with Rakan is dives like these are just a bit hard to pull off. Because when you're playing full AP Rakan, so when you dive a turret like this, you really cannot tank a lot of turret shots. Because you are already squishy, you know, you're gonna be taking a lot of damage from the enemy. And then to add a turret to that too, full AP Rakan is just not ready to tank that. Full AP Rakan just cannot tank that damage. And now he actually wasted his ultimate for the first dragon, which is pretty bad. Cannon also doesn't have an ultimate, so... And they have a Master E, so they are in a pretty bad situation. Like, this is definitely not a good situation. So let's actually see how the enemy handles it. Like, I would definitely expect the enemies to fully go in and just fight. Like, I really, really don't like this call. Again, I have not seen this game before. I'm just... You know, giving my life reaction. I really don't like this card because they just really cannot fight this. They don't have the ultimates. They don't have the cannon ultimate. As you can see, exactly as predicted, it is very obvious, actually. When you use your ultimates already, you can't fight. And they just really, they really just wasted their summoner spells as well. They died to the enemy and they gave the dragon. So in a situation like this, what you actually want to do leave the dragon you screwed up sure it's okay right like you're human you can screw up it's okay cannon says i was dead but even if he wasn't dead it's like you just can't fight because they used the rakan ultimate and they used the cannon ultimate as well which is really their two main abilities here he's trying to go in for a crazy edge oh that was good actually that ultimate was beautiful which also reduced the cooldown of his shield which mean which meant that he could use his shield again during the team fight Oh, I know the first ability saved it too. This was a much better fight. This was amazing. So, I think to understand about Rakan is you can tank initial damage when you ult in a team fight. Why? Because, as I said, whenever you hit an ability or a basic attack on the enemy, it reduces the cooldown of your passive of the shield, which is you know the shield that he just got by one second. So, what happens if you hit the enemy with your full combo, you know, which is your ultimate second ability, first ability? Your ultimate on five enemies means five seconds. Second ability on a few enemies, let's say two or three seconds. Then your first ability as well. And the basic attack, which is two more seconds. Which means basically completely resetting your passive. Which means using your passive twice. And while you're playing full AP Rakan, the passive gives an insane shield. In the later stages of the game, this shield is going to be like seven to eight hundred percent. Or it's not seven to eight hundred health shield. It's insane. It's, it's insane. It's really big. Mm, okay, that was a nice bait. That was a pretty nice bait. By the way, if I look tired, uh, it's not because of a content creation or anything like that. Uh, it's because I am tired, because I'm actually doing physical labor. I'm building a new side kitchen to our house, which I'm, I'm going to be gaming there. I may even put my studio there. We'll see. But yeah, that's why I'm tired. I'm going to be working on that these days. So yeah, if you see me tired these days, that is why. 
I really love how Rakan can just engage like that and then disengage too, right? Like it's really amazing to see how you can just very casually go over a wall, engage, knock up the enemy and just go right back, right? Like that says also one of the one of the powers that Rakan has. So there is a Varus. I'm interested to see how he deals with the Varus because, you know, here you can actually dive. Reasoning being, because you're in a two versus one situation. Get it? Nice. Yet again, like here you can go. Here you can go. There you go. There it is. He could have actually gone a bit earlier, perhaps. But it's fine. And now he's actually left dead. You cannot escape as a Rakan here. Yeah. Exactly. So it's fine, because he bought enough time for his team to go in. Um, he could have been a bit more aggressive there. But that's the thing with Rakan. You do more damage than you think. Rakan deals such a crazy amount of damage. Okay, so in this game, he goes for the Mercury Threats. And as I talked about during the build part of this video, Mercury Threats are great in this game because he's up against an Amumu and a Galio. These are, you know, these are champions that CC him. And a Varus, by the way, which is also a big counter to Rakan because Varus can just stop you. Varus can just stop you, root you, and you'll be dead. Because keep in mind, you're insanely squishy. I love the Locket as well. Um, you don't need a Protobot in this game. Protobot is generally good to catch up to ranged enemies. In this game, however, he's up against the Galio, the the um, the Diana, the Amumu, the Darius. These are melee champions, so we're gonna we're gonna be clumped up together, which means he doesn't really need the Protobot. Locket Enchant is amazing. Reasoning being Amumu, right? Like when Amumu ults, you can use your Locket, or when Galio is ulting, you use the Locket, right? Like Locket is just gonna be such a good rune in this situation of the game. I really wonder how this game is going to go if it's a 28 minute game. It better, it better be some good game. So now the dragon is up. Now the story is different. They do have their ability or they do have their ultimates. So now they can actually fight. So let's take a look at what happens. Boom, boom. Already used his third ability, which is actually a bit dangerous because now he doesn't have his third ability anymore. Boom. That was a nice heal. Now he needs to ult and go in. There you go. But you can see here the importance of the Mercury Threats, right? Like, if he didn't have Mercury Threats, he would have just died there very easily. Now you can start to see... Oh, they're struggling, but you can start to see that he's doing a little bit more. By the way, Galio is probably the biggest counter to Rakan, so this is definitely not a good draft for Rakan. Galio completely shuts down Rakan. Like, it is probably the absolute biggest counter in the game to Rakan. So, yeah, you know, I like that he didn't pick an easy game and he actually picked a game where they were struggling, because you can clearly see that they're struggling in this game. Oh, they... No, never mind. Yeah, they missed that minion. That's pretty sad. <clears throat> so here you can see he's walking behind the Jinx, and while you may argue that it is oh, that it is you know as a support you want to be walking in front of your in front of your ADC, as a Rakan you don't. You want to be surprising the enemy. You want to be walking behind your ADC or anyone really. Then when the fight happens, you engage with your third ability. You you go to your ally and then you engage with your second ability and then you can go out as well. Of course, you can hit your first ability as well to heal up. But basically, as a Rakan, you stay behind your team. You don't go, you know, you don't stay at front. Because you can always use your third ability to get close to the enemy. Because when you use your third ability and you dash to an ally, it actually puts you ahead of the ally. So it puts you very close to the enemy. And then you can, of course, do your engage when you want to. So keep that in mind when playing Rakan. Those are a bit of the rules of positioning. Because if you do get caught by a Varus ult or something, because you're frontline and you're just dead. It's not the ult Rakan anymore. It's the full AP Rakan playstyle so you have to play him like some sort of an assassin you're not a tank you're an assassin so here you can see again he gives a shield he goes in first ability he goes out even though he missed it this is really the the combo this is really the way to combo the go-to combo interestingly the enemies have an ap virus so i'm gonna be asking you guys to test your knowledge what is well this is not for Rakan, but this is just going to be a question. When you're playing a tank, what like when you're playing a tank into this composition, what is the golden item to go for here? Again, this is not this is unrelated to Rakan. I just want to be asking you this question. Like for example, you're playing, uh, you're, I don't know, you're playing Darius, or you're playing uh, Nunu, or you're playing whatever. You're playing like some sort of a tank into this composition. What is the absolute golden item to go for here? Look at what is in his team and what is in the enemy team. Pause the video if you want to. Test your knowledge. Put it in the comments. So pause the video. I'm going to reveal it. Uh, the item is Abyssal Mask. 
The reason that he won't go for Abyssal Mask in this situation is because he already has a Rod of Ages, which means that he would be copying a passive from the Abyssal Mask. Funny thing is, it would probably still be worth it to go for an Abyssal Mask, but Rod of Ages and Abyssal Mask, as I said, both have like a, a, a copied passive, so you won't be getting that. But when you're playing at some sort of a tank into this composition, you go for the Abyssal Mask, because even Galio actually deals magic damage, so... Abyssal Mask is like a golden item here. Yet again, I'm not talking about the current Rakan right here. I'm just talking about a tank in general into this composition. Also, you're increasing the damage of your cannon, who is a heavy AP champion, of course. So Abyssal Mask, just a perfect, perfect item in this situation. I wonder how good Hextech Mega Drive would be on Rakan, because they actually buffed Hextech Mega Drive yet again. They made the item 150 gold cheaper. If you don't know what Hextech Mega Drive does, uh, whenever you heal allies or CC an enemy, it reduces the cooldown of your enchantment, which in this case is a locket. I'm really curious to uh, regarding that item. Like, would it be worth it? I mean, Rakan is the best champion to go Hextech Mega Drive on. But I'm not sure. We still have to see it, I guess. They keep buffing the item. And now the item is super cheap. So you can definitely get it before the first dragon. Oh, like here. Like, you, you can go in, of course. But he's just gonna die. Like, he's just gonna die. Unfortunately, his team was not quite here. This would have been a perfect opportunity to engage. You know, he goes in, uses his ultimate, knock up, and then Cannon follows up with his ultimate flash. They would have just wiped the entire enemy team. But of course, Cannon was not here and his team was not here. So as you can see, he didn't fall for the bait and didn't go for it, right? Like, yeah, he just didn't go for it. Hmm. AP Varus is also a bit of a problem. Oh, yeah, that's a wasted Cannon ultimate. Unfortunate. That is unfortunate. Oi, oi, oi. That's one of their big combos. Oh my god, look at this team. This is wee, 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 wee. Oh, it's actually working. Damn. Nah, yeah, there you can see it. If you do screw up only once, you just die. You could see, like, how the Darius just completely destroyed him right there, right? Because um, that's the thing with full AP Rakan. You're so incredibly squishy. Oh! Oh, I was actually close. You're so incredibly squishy. So if you do get caught by a champion like the Darius, you're just going to get destroyed. You're, you are just going to get destroyed. And that is why you have to be careful with just using all of your abilities when you go in. It can be good to save some abilities, right? Like when you engage with, the, when you um, go to an ally with your third ability, there is a reason Rakan actually has two charges to the third ability. It is to go in, you know, do your combo, blah, blah, blah. Wow, that's sad. Do your combo, and then you can disengage with your third ability as well, right? Like, you can go back to an ally and disengage. It seems like he's actually trying out a full AP build this time, right? Like, he even told me the build, the, the build that I showed you guys, he told me is the best build, well, the best general build on Rakan. Um, I feel like he's actually just testing out the full AP build, which is, you know, Rod of Ages, Ravenous Death Cap, Void Staff, and then just full, full AP, Infinity Orb, etc., with that build, you're actually going to be one-shotting their squishies, but of course, you're going to be even squishier, and you're not going to be providing as much support to your team. So, th those are the trade-offs that, really that you're really making. Wait, Jinx went for Bloodthirster? Really? I think she has a Bloodthirster. Interesting to see. Oh, this is what I mean. Like, look, Galio just doesn't take any damage, because he can just use his second ability, and he doesn't take any damage whatsoever, and he taunts you as well. And Galio's ultimate provides a team-wide magic resist shield, a uh, team-wide magic shield, which of course counters you as well, because you deal team-wide magic damage with your ultimate a second ability. Here he needs to instantly ignite Darius, actually. The best thing to do is instantly ignite Darius and go in. So let's see. The ignite was a little late, but it ended up working anyways. This is great for his team, though. That was really amazing. They cut off those champions. By the way, the reason that I said instant ignite is to reduce Darius' healing from his first ability, in case he's able to, like, hit it on three three of them, because if that happens, they just lose the fight. But he didn't. Darius didn't hit anything, and they got the kill. The thing about playing Rakan as a support, by the way, is it's fine to take a lot of gold from your team. You know, it's fine to secure the kills, because you're going to be one of the carries, too. I say the same about Sona, because, like, if Sona takes a lot of kills, you know, she can carry the game as well. So Rakan is also one of those champions. 
By the way, guys, make sure you give the video a like. As I said, support videos tend to perform very, very badly on my YouTube channel. And I gotta say, this has probably been one of the worst weeks viewership-wise for my channel. I don't care, but the YouTube algorithm cares. You know, I wanna, I'm wanna. i still gonna provide you the support videos that you deserve because I've got Challenger playing support exclusively. So, of course, I have like a million support videos. But, you know, if you want to give the video a like, it helps the channel. If you don't want to, just keep watching. Grab some pop. Well, it's a little late for the popcorn, actually. You should have grabbed some popcorn for this video, though. But, yeah, again, it's late. Oh, I love what they're doing here. There is a champion. But it's a Galio. Ah, oh, anyone besides the Galio would have just been an instant one-shot right here. But it was actually the Galio. Damn. They were very unlucky that it was actually the Galio face checking that. Because that's why they weren't just able to one-shot the enemy. Second ability. Boom. Nice. Fiora can win this, by the way. He's going to support the Fiora right here. Oh, sad. He couldn't actually follow through. But this game is intense. Look at this. There's no way he survives. He actually does survive. The Amumu just dashed to, <laughs> dashed to that jungle and survived. Oh, what a game. No way. If Master E dies here, it's just game over. That heal, though. What? Wait, let me see that again. Was that a 410 heal? 410. Jesus. This is why you go for full AP rock on. Ignite instant? Come on. There it is, the instant ignite. But... <coughs> it's not enough. Unfortunately, it's just not enough. The instant ignite was very good. But it's just not enough. It's also good, by the way, because in case Darius gets a kill, the triumph healing gets reduced as well when you instant ignite him. Oh, if they take... Oh, no. This is tragic. Oh! What? No way. The enemies must be molding right now. They must be hella tilted. That was just game over. He just stole the, he just stole the Elder Dragon. He, he went into stasis and then he stole the Elder Dragon. What? No, there is no way. This is just this is just sad for the enemies. At this point, I just like at this point I just feel bad for the enemy. This is just wait. There's no way. Oh, Look at that barrier that Rakan has, which is the mountain dragon plus the passive, of course. Like, what kind of a barrier? What kind of a crazy barrier is that? <laughs> oh, no way. That was just no way. They just got that right. Oh. <laughs> Those are really the worst moments. Like, as in worst moments for the enemy. Of course, it's a party moment for this team. But imagine, you know, imagine this happening to you. You know, you're just casually taking the dragon. And then a master, he goes in, uses a stasis enchant and just steals it like that. That's the biggest tilt moment ever, I swear. Fiora has a hole breaker, so they, they, they should leave the Fiora alone right there. Fiora needs to push top. He's actually split pushing bot. He, mm, he goes back? Yeah, I was just gonna say, you can just keep pushing right here. The reason is, he needs to push out this wave, just so the Darius cannot get the Baron minions, right? Like, because the enemy did take the Baron. And it's very important for him to push out that wave as well, because it's gonna buy a lot of time for them, so the enemy cannot push Baron minions in the bot lane. As you can see, now the Darius is all the way to, uh, there, so now he cannot push, which means they can put more focus in defending the mid lane, right? Like, that's, that's the whole point of pushing out that wave. They really just have to be able to deal with this... Um, deal with this Baron buff, and then they're fine. Enemy Amumu actually has an Abyssal Mask, which is a very good item for them, right? Because now they're... Uh, Everyone is going to be taking bonus damage, especially because Amumu already has uh, the integrated passive, which makes his team deal 10% bonus through damage. So the Abyssal Mask is going to make that even more. It's crazy. It's such a good item in this situation for the Amumu. But yet again, they lost the Elder Dragon, so that changes everything. But I mean, look at those barriers that he's providing. Crazy. Like late game full AP Rakan is just crazy. Now, I wonder if Gathering Storm would be worth it, actually. Because then it gives you even more AP. And right after you get the Rabadon's Death Cap, you're going to have even better AP, right? Damn. But the damage, the barriers, the healing, everything is just crazy. I 
Now that like there's no way they lose this game, right? Like there's just absolutely no way they lose team fights anymore. They're just way too strong. He has four items, by the way. Four items. And the void staff. So he's gonna shred through their magic resist too. I love how scared everyone is, right? Like, no one wants to throw this game. We're 23 minutes into the game. No one wants to be the one that throws this game. So you can clearly see everyone is just so scared. But the enemies make a bit of a mistake here, which is splitting up at the wrong moment. The enemies do not have the Baron buff. So here you can see this is the wrong moment to split up. Ult? 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 Ult! Come on! It's too late now. He should have actually ulted a little earlier. Like, now he's just stuck here without an ultimate. There it is. Now we have the ultimate. Darius, however, is killing the Jinx. Darius actually did kill the Jinx. And he's getting a turret. Can he get the turret before they're back? He has a Trinity Force, which means he takes turrets very fast. He's gonna get the turret, but he's probably gonna die for it. Uh, is he though? I think they... No, he isn't. He has a Deadman's Plate and the Cloud Dragon, so he's not gonna die from it. What a game. Master E is soloing Baron as well. What a crazy game. He can, he, yeah, he can just, he can solo the Baron, I think. With his first ability. Ah, never mind. He needs to back up from his team. Soloing Baron is just a tad bit too hard. Yeah, it's just a bit too much. Oh, you heal up from, ooh, interesting. You heal up from Baron and Dragon too. I actually, well, I knew that before, but I forgot about it. Because as I said, I haven't played Rakan for a really long time. But if you need a little bit of healing... You can do it on the Baron and the Dragon as well. That, that's nice. Okay. Huh. You know, in Wild Rift, there's like so many little things in this game. It's crazy. Like, you know, even if you play Wild Rift for like years, for, you know, for like one and a half year, even if you main a champion, you can really... Oh, oh he is going for the Abyssal Mask. There we go. This is the item that I was talking about. That's actually funny. I like he's actually going for the item that I was talking about because this is quite literally the perfect item. Eh, that's funny. Okay, but besides what I meant is it doesn't matter how long you play Wild Rift, there is always something to learn in this game because there is there is really always something that you just really don't know about. But yeah, funny that he's going for the Abyssal Mask as well. Maybe a little late, but of, he's actually prioritizing damage over the Abyssal Mask. But it's again, it's funny because it's literally the absolute perfect item to go for in this game. Ooh. Yeah, again, you can see, like, he just doesn't deal that much damage to the Galio. You know, normally he would just one shot anyone, but Galio is just one of those champions that can actually tank it. But yeah, as I said, with the Elder Dragon, with the Baron buff as well, there's just absolutely no way that they. Whoa. There's absolutely no way that they lose a fight here. Yeah, like, I mean, look at that. At this point, Cannon is just unbeatable. So, wow, what a game. Thank you so much, Antisocial, for giving us this gameplay, right? Like, look at that barrier. Look, Just look at that barrier. How crazy is that? I'm really curious to see how much damage everyone did and everything like that. So let's take a look. Scroll the video a little bit. Oh, this was still very early on in the season, by the way. I believe he's Grandmaster now. So, MVP. Show the damage and everything like that. There it is. Does it show the damage like this? Where? No! No damage graph! Wait, really? Oh, there. <laughs> Alright, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this crazy Rakan video. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be having some food. And I'll see you guys in the next... No, it's... it's. I will see you all in the next Wild Rift video. Bye-bye.